everybody, it's John from our HodgePodge Homestead. It's been a while. Um, today, we're doing a video for Jam It Up June. Um, Tony from the Kettle Kitchen is putting this collaboration video on. There's 30 channels out there doing Jam It Up June, so it's gonna be pretty cool. What you need to do is obviously watch everybody's video. If you leave a message, comment on that video, you're in the running to be drawn for a prize. There's going to be lots of prizes given out. There's going to be a canner, a water bath canner, stainless steel. Um, there's going to be some jars, some lids, that kind of stuff. And those are all going to be drawn out on the 30th of June by Tony. He'll be doing that. So in order for you to be able to win those, you've got to comment on everybody's video. So the more you comment, the more your chances are of getting drawn. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm gonna do a watermelon rind preserves. Now you can find this recipe on page 39 in this book. This is an older one. Or you can find the same recipe on page 68 in a newer version of the same book. Same recipe, just a different page. That means I added stuff. These books are so cool. Like seven, eight bucks. I get mine at Walmart every couple years. Just to see if there's anything new that I want to try. I want to give it a spin. So, anyway, I'm going to read you uh, the instructions. There's there, now there's a waiting period. There's a couple things you got to do. You just can't jump right into doing it. So, um, let me go over the ingredients. Okay, you need a quart and a half or one and a half quarts of prepared watermelon rind. Okay, it's not it's not the red fruity stuff. It's actually made from the rind. Um, you'll need four tablespoons of salt, three and a half quarts of water divided, so you use it a couple different times, a tablespoon of ginger, which the last time I did this, I didn't use ginger because I'm not a ginger fan, so you, you don't have to use the ginger. Uh, four cups of sugar, one fourth cup of lemon juice, one half cup of th thinly sliced lemons, just a, a small medium lemon is all you need for that. Okay, so what you want to do is to prepare the rind, you want to trim the green peel and pink flesh from thick watermelon rind. Cut the rind into six inch pieces. And you know when I'm sitting here struggling and my glasses are right here. <laughs> okay, this will be a little easier for me. Okay, you want to cut the rind into one inch pieces and dissolve the salt in two quarts of water. Pour salted water over the rind and let it stand for five to six hours. You drain it, you rinse it, and then you drain it again. Cover rind with cold water and let stand for another 30 minutes. Drain. Sprinkle ginger over rind, cover with water, cook until fork tender, and then you drain it again. To prepare the preserves, we're gonna combine the sugar, the lemon juice, and one and a half quarts of water in a large sauce pot. We're gonna boil that for five minutes. Add rind and boil gently for 30 minutes or until syrup thickens. Add sliced lemon, cook until melon rind is transparent. Remove from heat, skim foam if necessary, ladle hot preserves into hot jars leaving one fourth inch headspace. Adjust two piece caps, process for 20 minutes in a boiling water canner. You'll get about six half pints out of that. Now I've um, traditionally done all my jams and jellies in half pints. And the reason I do that is if I were to do it in a pint jar, number one, I like to save my pint jars for, for venison. That's, a, that's about a pound of meat in a pint jar for me. And um, if I have a whole pint of jelly, I kind of get tired of that jelly after a while. So if I have half pints, I can eat it quicker and change up, you know, because I've got all different types of jellies, you know, jams and jellies down there. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this as far as cutting up the rind and getting the um, the brine ready. I think it's, a, I believe it's called a brine. It, I'm going to call it a brine. So, all right. When I've got the watermelon rind all cut up, I'll be back with you. All right, guys. I only got a little bit more to cut up, so I'll show you my last little bit that I'm cutting up here. Let me get this camera adjusted. That sun just nailed me. Uh, that should do pretty good right about there. 
Yeah. Okay, so I've got the watermelon cut up. And uh, like I said, you want to get the all the pink off. So I'm going to cut around the rind here. And while I'm at it, I'll just cut this up right here, throw it in my bowl. So we can enjoy that later. Just about filling that bowl. And this rind uh, was pretty thin. I know the, the instructions say that they, they want you to get all the, the pink off. Well, if I got did all that, I wouldn't have much rind. So I just get it cut in half like that, and I'm just cutting it in small little pieces like this, about one inch, close to that. Once I get it all cut into my pieces, all the way around the rind that I've just cut off, and I just lay it on its side, and I just cut the green off. And like I said, there's a little bit of pink left on there, but it's not gonna hurt anything. If I recall last time I made this, which has been several years, um, the rind seemed to be a whole lot thicker. So you know what? Times are changing. That stuff's going on. And by the way, I paid $8. When's the last time you bought a watermelon? We paid $8 for this watermelon yesterday. And uh, I think that's kind of ridiculous. But you know what? Farmers got to have gas. It's just, it's, it's a thing of life these days, you know? Buy in bulk, I guess. Do what you can do. Stock that pantry. Do everything you gotta do. Okay, right here I've got, pretty much it, it calls for a quart and a half, but with all the air that could be in there, I just went and did almost two quarts. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, I'm gonna get my salt dissolved in the water and get this prepared. And when I'm ready to dump this in, I'll be back with you. Okay? All right, so I've got my salt. I've got two quarts of warm water because I want to dissolve this salt. So it takes four tablespoons. One, two, three, Four. I count out loud because if I don't, I'll lose track. Sorry about the sun, but it's coming in pretty bright through our main windows here. Okay, so I've got two quarts of water. And I've got our salt. Let's pour this in there. Oh yeah, pour it in there and make a mess all over the table. All over the countertop here, but towel on hand. Good to go. I'm used to making messes, so I'm used to having backup. Alright, so we're going to get this stirred in here, get this salt dissolved, and then it says dissolve salt in two quarts of water, pour salted water over the rind. Well, I'm going to pour the rind into the salted water. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. Into the salted water. I'm going to give it a little stir. I'm going to cover that up. And we're going to let that sit for five to six hours. Now, through the magic of YouTube, no, I'm just kidding. I gotta wait five or six hours. <laughs> All right, I'll be back with you guys later on. All right, morning guys. It is, uh, it's the next day. We had a few issues come up yesterday and had to take care of a couple things. So the point I'm at now is in the directions, once you've, um, cut up your watermelon rind. You want to put the salt in it, soak it with water, 
drain it after four or five hours, five or six hours, drain it, put water over it, drain it again, and then put water over again and let it sit another 30 minutes in just plain water. Well, mine sat overnight in the fridge, just what, what we had to do, you know, life happens around the old hodgepodge. So um, from here right now, I'm gonna sprinkle the ginger over. I decided I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna give that a try. And it says that they want to do one tablespoon of ginger. So, like I said, I'm not a huge ginger fan. We'll see what it does. So I'm gonna sprinkle that over. Tablespoon, yep, all right. So ginger's in there and it says, sprinkle the ginger over the rind, cover with water and cook until it's fork tender. So let's get it covered in water. All right, so we are covered in water. Turn the burner on medium heat here. Or like when you watch videos from, from over in England, they'll, they'll say uh, gas mark number three. <laughs> like that's cool. So I'm on gas mark like three and a half because mine, mine runs hot. So I'm gonna cover this up and I'm gonna cook it until it becomes fork tender. And then at that point, I'll come back to you. So we'll talk to you in a while. All right guys, so I'm a little out of practice and I did a step without filming it. Basically what I had was the rhubarb needed to be drained and put in a bowl. So I, I drained it after it became fork tender. It took about 30 minutes is all. So I drained it, put it in this bowl right over here and now in here I have a quart and a half of water and four cups of sugar. What I need to add to that now is uh, some lemon juice and I need to add one fourth cup of lemon juice. So I thought I had lemon juice in the refrigerator. I mean, I don't know where it would have went. I'm the only one who ever uses it. And I thought I had it in there, but I don't know. So I had to run up to the store real quick. And it's just a little, I don't have a grocery store within, I think the closest grocery store is like 16 miles away or something like that. But gas today, so I just went to a little, uh, like a little liquor store. Uh-oh, plugged up. And uh, imagine that, they had lemon juice, so uh, imagine that. What liquor store? What liquor store wouldn't have lemon juice, I guess. All right, so let's see if I can get it. There we go. All right. In it goes, we're gonna rinse it out. Okay, now from here, it says to prepare, to prepare the preserves, you wanna combine your sugar, lemon juice, and one and a half quarts of water in a large sauce pot, boil that for five minutes. So we're gonna boil this for five minutes, and after that five minutes, we'll add the rind and boil that another 30 minutes, okay? So when I get to that point where I'm adding the rind, I'll be back with you, and I promise I'll hit the play button. Record button, see? All right, guys, I'm back. The, uh, Sugar, water, and lemon has gone ahead and boiled for five minutes. So what the instructions say to do next is to add the rind back in. All right, stir that a good stir. And then it says, add rind and gently boil for 30 minutes or until the syrup thickens. So we're gonna get her going again. We'll put the lid on, bring it to a boil, then bring it down to a gentle boil for 30 minutes. Uh, in this pot right here, you can't see it. Let's see if I can do about too much disruption here. Right here, this is what I'm gonna water bath can in today. It's got my jars in there getting sterilized, getting hot. Now, you don't need a water bath canner to water bath. You can use this regular pot like this. However, you have to have a ring on the bottom. You can't have your jar sitting directly on top of that heat. So I have another ring down in the bottom of this that they're sitting on right now. 
So, once this comes up to a boil for its 30 minutes, I'm gonna bring it over to the island and we will jar these up, put them in the canner, and I believe it's for 20 minutes. Yep, we're gonna process them for 20 minutes, but I'll be with you back. I'll be with you back. I'll be back with you before we go to that process. So, in 30 minutes, we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. It hasn't been 30 minutes yet. It's been probably two, but I wanted to point something out to you. A lot of my friends and, and you know, back we were doing videos quite often, I was getting a lot of comments on things. People would say, canning is such a mess. There's so many processes, but you know there are. Uh, cooking a Thanksgiving dinner is a mess. There's a lot of processes, but what I do as I'm, I just stepped on my dog's tail. As I'm uh, doing all these kind of things, and like this stuff has to go for 30 minutes. Well, during that 30 minutes, instead of sitting down and just waiting, clean up, clean what you have dirty. This bowl had the, the rind in it. Now it's clean, it's ready to go back in the nesting over there. Matter of fact, let's put it back. This is one of my, in the, in the Pyrex collecting world, this is called a Frankenstein group of four. None of them go together. I just thought they were extras that we had laying around. I like them, I use them for making my breads, uh, making my watermelon rind jelly, all this kind of stuff. I'll put it back. There, that's one thing done. Okay, my sugar. This needs to go downstairs. A lot of these canning stuff's gonna have to go back downstairs, so I'll put it in a pile with everything that's gotta go downstairs back into the pantry. I've got my ball canning books, still using them. And that's another thing. I'm reading you these directions as I'm doing this because that's how I do it. I don't know them by heart. Granted, I've only done this once before, but even when I do things I've done 100 times, tomatoes, I, I still get the book out. I still read it. Things can change. Every now and then, if you buy a newer version, like that's newer than this one, something may have changed. Something might, you know, they, they might have added a new, you know, stipulation to a, a, a process in the canning. So anyway, I always read it. I do it every single time that I can anything. So, lesson learned. Always have your book out, always read your instructions, always go buy them. Okay. I'm also going to bring you over here and I'll show you what we have set up for, for the canning. If I can manage to do this. I'm not very good at this. Okay, right here, I've got my vinegar. That's to wipe off the rims of the jars. Right here, I've got my jar lids that are soaking in hot water to get that ring a little softer. They've also been sterilized. I've got my funnel. I've got my ladle, I've got my drying rack for when, the, for when they come out of the, the canner. And I've got all my towels laid out. I've got my rings right here. I've got my magnet to grab my lids. And I've got my jaws to grab the jars out of the hot water because it will be hot. So if you have all this stuff straight and ready to go before you start canning, you're not in a rush or an emergency status because you forgot something. Now, hey, I've canned for 20 years. There's times I get complacent and I'm struggling. I'm in an emergency situation because I forgot something. But I try and I tend to normally have everything out and ready. So that's just canning tip 101 from me. Take it as you wish, but things usually turn out pretty good. This is a good mystery. I don't remember using the ginger or the lemon last time because I'm not a big lemon fan. In foods, I love lemonade, but I, I just don't like, like, leave lemon out of cheesecake. No reason for it. And uh, ginger, I'm, I like ginger on, um, you know, Asian food and things like that, but I've never really had it this way. Anyway, we're going to find out how it's going to be, and uh, I'm thinking it's going to be pretty good. Anyway, when this is gone for 30 minutes, I'll be back with you. All right, so I remembered to turn the record button on this time, so... It is gently boiled for 30 minutes. And uh, I'm getting ready to bring this over here. I gotta put another hot pot holder down. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this and get this centered over here first. All right, so I'm gonna get my jars out of the uh, canner. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it right here. Empty the water. And this is how I do it, guys. Keeps all that sticky stuff, woo! That was pretty warm. Keeps all that sticky stuff off the towels and whatnot. Okay. Here we go. Get my funnel. inch of head space. All right, let's uh, put this in our vinegar. Wipe the lid off. Oh. Put a lid on. Put on the ring. And let's put it right back in the water. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let me lower this down just a little bit. There we go, that's a little better. All right, again. this off. And right down in that water. Okay, when I get done with the rest of these, I'll be back with you and we'll go from there. All right guys, so I've got them all jarred up. I got seven uh, half pints. So we're gonna put them back on the stove over here. I like it a lot better when Heather holds the camera for me. All right, so I've got about an inch and a half, two inches of water on top of these jars. And again, the instructions say to process them for 20 minutes in a boiling water canner and it should yield about six half pints. I ended up getting seven, and I probably could, could have done a little bit more, but I'm not gonna do just a couple more jars for all that, so. Anyway, we will uh, be back with you when this is done boiling, processing. All right, guys, I'm back. It has been uh, a lot of time, 20 minutes under a good rolling boil here. So I'm gonna take these out. And one thing you don't want to do when you take them, take your jars out, there's water up on the top. You don't want to tip them, because that can, that can set your seal goofy. So I just take a rag, put it in there, soak that water up, and a lot of times that water will also be pulled down into the jar, just due to the, the, the pressure. But be careful, it is hot. And I put mine on a drying rack so that there's air all the way under. Don't be surprised if I get a pop before I get these all out. Oh, there's one right there. Well, there's another one. Now, a couple of these, I didn't put any rind in. Um, yeah, I, did, I didn't put the watermelon rind in a couple of them just to see what it would be like if it would thicken up. It might end up just being a kind of like a syrup. But we're gonna test it and we're gonna see and I'll let you guys know. So okay, 
that is my uh let's grab this down i'll talk to you kind of regular so that's my jam it up june so uh that was a hodgepodge homesteads version of watermelon rind jelly hope you guys enjoyed that remember to um subscribe to all these people you know they're all good people putting out good content um, hopefully you learned something from our video today and I'm sure you'll you've, you'll learn a lot from everybody else's videos. Um, comment on everyone so that puts you in the running for uh, getting some of the prizes that are going out there. And uh, hopefully um, you'll win something. So um, from our HodgePodge Homestead, we thank you for watching. And you know, we always say here at HodgePodge Homestead, we love using watermelon rind to make jelly. You should too. See you all later.